Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship today. My name is Pastor Kristen Schmidt, and it's wonderful to see uh, all of you who are here, and also a very special warm welcome to anyone joining us online. We are blessed by your presence. Uh, and now today is a special day in the life of the church. Not only is it All Saints Sunday, it is a communion Sunday here at St. Peter's. And I'll do just a little, a little visual explanation. We had some updates after our council meeting. And thank you to Janice for taking care of communion for us this month and next. And we decided in the interest of really wanting everyone to feel welcome at God's table, um, we would do, as we talked about, everything new is old again. You did this before. But what we're doing is we have the, the wine here, just as it always was, and the grape juice is white grape juice. So, so you can spot it if you're someone that prefers that, that's easy to grab. Um, and so what will happen is I will, uh, when everyone comes forward uh, and kneels, I'll pass out the wafer and uh, the uh, assistant uh, will hold out the tray to you and you can choose either the wine or the grape juice. And then what will happen is after you're blessed and dismissed, there are baskets there on the front of either pew where you can put the cups. We should be all set. Any, any questions, anything I'm missing or other instructions? Okay. All right. Well, f so, and thank you, everybody, for all the ways everyone helps to serve in worship. We do have Sign Up Central out there. Thanks, Susan, for organizing that. So... Thank you, everybody, who is signing up and, and taking part. That is very much appreciated. Um, and do we have, uh, are there any additions to these names of folks that we want to remember for All Saints today? I want to make sure we don't miss anybody. Okay. All right. Very good. Now, we do have our first communion classes beginning today. Um, it'll be today and then also next week right here at St. Peter's at noon. We've got Owen taking part, so that is exciting. Um, and if, if the kids can't make it to this first one, that's okay. Let them get in touch with me, and, and we'll get them caught up. No trouble. We have uh, Shirley what? I'm sorry. We have Shirley. You, well, we actually we she was actually passed in October, so we remembered her at last year's. But. Um, I have, I have no problem again, so not that, not that we can't light a candle for her again, Absol absolutely, yes, that was just uh, a couple weeks ago. But. Mm -hmm. um, so I will turn it over to Gary, you want to let folks know the council updates? Um, council meeting Thursday night, uh, work on the budget, and then next Sunday will be our uh, congregational meeting uh, to vote on the budget. We also, not everybody signed up at once, but if you want to start campaigning, that's fine. We need at least one person on the council to operate next year. Where Alice has did her sentence. No, no. <laughs> uh, uh, she will go off the council at uh, the end of the year, so we need to replace her. Uh, we need at least one. We can have as many as three more. So we can have up to seven. So if the list gets too long, people wanting on, we can uh, we can accept uh, seven people. So that's the update on that. So everybody volunteer for the council. It's a good time. We're nice. It would be an hour. It usually lasts about an hour. So that's a, definitely a good bunch of folks. Um, for the following events on our announcements there, I direct you, we have a, ha a handy handout. Thank you, Susan, that just has everything coming up in this busy and joyous season. For we've got our community Thanksgiving service here at Lower Deer Creek on the 20th, um, which is the Camden Community of Churches, so that's a pretty neat thing. We've got the Christmas Bazaar, where we'll be giving out, um, and I didn't bring mine up, but there's a, they're really neat angels. Um, and we've got our great party here at St. Peter's on the 27th. Um, and let's see, anything anybody else needs to say about any of that? Are we all set? We might, the, there's a, one of the angels is there on the table. Oh, very good. Central, there's an angel there. They're pretty we're cool. we're going to give those away at the bazaar, and we're also giving them out, um, like the first Sunday of Advent at worship. And next Sunday, I think we're going to try to stay after, and we've got like this little ribbon and little tags to advertise <coughs> that we need a little help if okay. anybody can stay and just tie in those on the angels to get those ready. So. All right.
right, very good. And feel free to bring bottles of pop and two liters for the game, a ring toss game for the party and any door prize things you want to bring. They're starting to pile up out there. So. Very good. All right, well, uh, any other announcements before we begin? We are glad to see you. It's so nice to hear your voice again and see you in your spot. So yeah, we're glad to have you back, Jane. Very good. All right. Well, with that, we'll quiet our minds and our hearts and begin our worship. And I invite you to stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning, your spirit moved over the waters. And by your word, you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the seas, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> All right, it's time for the children's sermon. Come on down. And you guys can come meet me over here. Over here at the font. And you can, if you want, you can put your hand in there and you could trace a little cross on your forehead. And when we do that, we remember our baptism. So today you might, you see the font over here and we also have some sand over there. And in a little while, we're gonna be putting some candles in there. That's because today is a special day at the church. It's called All Saints Sunday. Do you know what a saint is? Well, the saint is everybody in God's family. And the way we start out, the way we get welcomed into God's family is right here when we're baptized. And the saints are all the people that we love and who God loves. And some of those people live with God in heaven, which is a wonderful place.
place. And some of those saints are here. Did you know you're a saint? Did <laughs> <laughs> you know you're a saint? You already know that? All those people out there, what are they? They're saints. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. And so what will happen, I'll show you later on, Katie and I are going to do this. We're going to say all the names, and we're going to put candles in there for each person that we remember. And we give thanks for their life, and we give thanks that they are in heaven with God. Now, even though we're glad that we got to love them and we're glad they're in heaven, obviously we get sad, right, because we, we miss people. What are some things that we can do when we're sad? We can pray, yeah. Yeah, we can pray and, and God can help us feel better, can comfort our heart. Sometimes God helps us by bringing other people who would, who would say things to us that would make us feel better because God works through people and pets and shows love through us that way. Now, if we know someone else who is sad, what's something that we can do? Could we pray then too? Yeah, and we pray and we pray to, we pray for a lot of people in church, and so we can pray for them in church, we can pray for them on our own, and we can be kind to them and we could remind them that God loves them. Those are all good things that we can do. All right. Well, do you want to do our prayer? Okay. Let's do it. Thank you for the world so sweet. Thank you for the food we eat. Thank you for the bird that sings. Thank you, God, for everything. Amen. All right, well, thanks for coming up, guys. It's taken from the seventh chapter of Daniel, beginning at the first verse. The book of Daniel was written in the second century BCE e, when the Syrian king was severely persecuting the Jews. Daniel's vision of the four beasts proclaims that human kings will come and go, but the kingdom will ultimately belong to God and to God's people. In the first year of the king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head as he lay in bed. Then he wrote down the dreams. I, Daniel, saw my vision by night, the four winds of heaven stirring up the great sea, and four great beasts came up out of the sea, different from one another. As for me, Daniel, my spirit was troubled within me, and the visions of my head terrified me. I approached one of the attendants to ask him the truth concerning all this. So he said that he would disclose to me the interpretation of the matter. As for those four great beasts, four kings shall arise out of the earth. But the holy ones of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 149, and we'll read it responsively. Hallelujah! God's praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their Lord. Let them praise the Maker's name with dancing. Let them sing praise with tambourine and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Let the praises of God be in their throat and the two-edged sword in their hand. 
to wreak vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples. To inflict on them the judgment decreed. This is glory for all God's faithful ones. Hallelujah. The second lesson is taken from the first chapter of Ephesians. Second chapter. <laughs> Beginning at the 11th verse. After giving thanks for the faith, the writer of this letter prays that they might understand the wisdom, hope, and power of God that is embodied in the Jesus Christ. In Christ we have obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplished all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who are the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praises of his glory. In him you also, when you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints, and for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of the great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rules and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. In echoes of the prophet Isaiah and Mary's song of praise, Jesus reveals surprising things about who enjoys blessing and who endures woe. He invites his disciples to shower radical love, blessing, forgiveness, generosity, and trust, even on enemies and outsiders. And now our reading. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you, 
If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and Jesus the Christ. Jesus looked up at his disciples. Jesus raised his eyes to his disciples. What would it be like to have Jesus looking at us, seeing us, taking in not just our exterior selves, but the totality of our lives and circumstances what would it be like to have Jesus looking up at us and knowing that he sees what we hope for and what makes us afraid, where we need help and healing and where we need to grow, our relationships as they are and as they could be? What would it be like to feel the incarnate God's gaze upon us? It's no accident that in Luke, Jesus' famous sermon is set on the plain rather than up on a mountain like in Matthew's gospel. The lowly setting fits who Jesus is describing, the downtrodden and the dispossessed. Jesus is speaking to people under stress, communities disintegrating under the pressure of Roman imperial rule and his sayings address the economic and the social conflict that's taking place in village life. People are finding it hard to continue the mutual support that had held them together in the past. For example, families who lent to others would have been burdened by heavy taxes, and they would have been seeking repayment from families unable to do so. Jesus is encouraging people to remember their covenant tradition handed down through Moses and his instruction to love our enemies echoes the commandment first given to God's people in Leviticus. Jesus reminds his audience then and now who they are, calling us to recommit to God and to each other. In that society, Power brought wealth, and lack of power meant that you were vulnerable to, to people who were greedy and preyed on the weak. Poverty was both a social and an economic condition. As one commentator explained, in ancient Palestine, the perception was that all goods existed in a finite, limited supply, and all goods were already distributed. And this uh, included not only material goods, but honor, friendship, love, security, and status as well, literally everything in life. And because the pie could not grow larger, a larger piece for anyone automatically meant a smaller piece for someone else. Now today we would describe this as a scarcity mindset rather than the attitude of abundance that God shows throughout history and that Jesus calls people to follow. In his sermon, Jesus describes a world, God's kingdom, that would be the exact opposite of what life was like for the poor people in this agrarian society. In calling the suffering blessed, he is calling them honorable. In pronouncing woe on the rich and well-regarded, he is calling them shameless. It's jarring then and now to hear, blessed are you when you're poor and hungry. The Beatitudes, as the sermon is known, means to be called blessed, to be counted as happy. Blessed are you, favored by God are you, when you weep and are excluded. In calling the suffering blessed, Jesus is saying they will be unburdened and satisfied. Jesus' sermon gives us a picture of what it looks like to live in God's kingdom where everyone's needs are met and where no one is left out. Jesus looks up at his disciples. 
he would have been looking at the group of 12 apostles that he had just selected for leadership, the larger group of disciples learning his teachings and becoming his followers, and a broader crowd of people seeking healing. Each face he saw would have needed teaching, healing, and repentance, just as each of us does. This sermon is an invitation, encouragement, and challenge to all who seek to follow him. Multiple times in scripture, we hear of Jesus looking at people <coughs> at critical moments in their lives. When the rich ruler asks what he must do to have eternal life, and Jesus tells him to sell all he has, give the money to the poor, and follow him, the man who is very wealthy becomes sad, and Jesus looks at him. When Zacchaeus, the tax collector who stole from his people and climbs a tree to hear Jesus, Jesus looks at him and says, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. And Zacchaeus repents. After Jesus is arrested, Peter betrays him three times before the cock crows. Jesus turns and looks at him. Peter weeps, beginning his repentance. Jesus sees what they and what we need to do and calls us to something greater. When Jesus sees us, he sees us transformed by baptism, part of God's family, one of the saints. Jesus sees in us the fullness of our calling. Woe, alas, to those of us who stop at ourselves and miss out, who fall short of the joy of knowing what it is to participate in building God's kingdom. Our connection to others also calls us to commit to them, not to be content to rest in our own richness, fullness, and laughter, but to regard those things as blessings to be shared. Yet Jesus does all of this from a posture of humility. He looks up at his disciples. Jesus is the ultimate servant leader. His power comes not from dominating others or from taking from them, but from voluntary sacrifice. And this is the paradoxical power of the cross. Jesus sees us. And this can be especially poignant on this day because for some of us, Jesus is seeing us in our grief. That might be a mix of joyous remembrance and sadness. It might be extreme pain. Jesus sees us as one who has also suffered and experienced human hardship. And Jesus doesn't only see us. He sees everyone who came before us and who will come after us. He sees the communion of saints. He sees how we are now and in the light of eternity. He sees the fulfillment of God's kingdom when his sermon comes to complete fruition. When Jesus tells his audience and us to do to others as we would have them do to us, he is calling us to look upon others as he looks upon us, to see people's needs and sorrows and also to see their belovedness, their holiness, and their place in God's family. Saints are not saints for themselves, but in order to be blessing to others. And the church has commemorated the saints, the baptized people of God, living and dead, who make up the body of Christ since the third century. This is a day of remembrance. It is also a day of hope. We give thanks for the way God's kingdom is being built here today. We look forward to when it will be fully realized and all pain and sorrow and injustice ceases and when we will gather with all the saints fully known and loved by God.
I invite you to stand for our hymn of the day. Let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. Holy One, your church rests on the faithful who came before us. Give bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders the will to carry the church forward and discern your will for the future. Lord, in your mercy. Holy One, the earth is yours and all that dwells within it. Care for places ravaged by natural disasters, especially Florida. Quell raging fires and halt destruction caused by flooding. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Holy One, you raise up leaders to guide your people. Kindle in them a passion to care for others, a desire to seek the common good, and the courage to love their enemies. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Holy One, you bless those who are poor, hungry, and reviled. Provide food, housing, and security to all who are vulnerable or in crisis. May those who have more than enough give generously. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Holy One, hold us in community with one another. Nurture a spirit of abundant hospitality and intentional inclusion among us, welcoming the gifts of adults and children. Inspire creative visions for our life together. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up in prayer this day, Jane, Fred, Judy, Tom, Luane, Brenda, Kim, David and Alice, 
Chad, Roger, Bill, Wayne, all school students and teachers, including Katie and school staff, college students Chad, Megan, and Scott, and seminary and Candace, all those affected by COVID, including healthcare workers, the Ukraine, and all who are affected by war, and everyone affected by Hurricane Ian. Holy One, we remember in Thanksgiving all those who have died. Phyllis, Patricia, Joe, Barb, Dawn, Cooper, and Shirley. Wipe away our tears and comfort us with the promise of everlasting life in you, Lord, in your mercy. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Okay, I thought we were going to do the Remembering the Saints, but we'll do communion. Well, I might be I just not have this slide for some reason. That's okay. We can, should we do communion and do that after? No. Okay. I just don't want to skip it. It's after the Lord's Prayer that we do the, the, the Remembering the Saints. All, all, all right about me. Okay. All right. Okay. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to God. I'm going to take a little breath here and forgive me having to adjust my expectations, so I thank you for your grace. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the witness of your saints, you show us the hope of our calling and strengthen us to run the race set before us, that we may delight in your mercy and rejoice with them in glory. 
And so with all the saints, with the choirs of angels, and all the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Holy God, we give thanks for all the baptized who have gone before us, both those we know and the countless ones unknown to us. We give thanks for the lives of these saints who have passed in the last year. Phyllis Cranford. Joe Jones. Don McCain. Patricia Grimm. Cooper Mummert. Barb. McCain Shirley Shock They have opened the door to the church to new life in Christ now and to your promised future reign by your Holy Spirit, keep us in communion with them until the day when you will wipe away every tear and death and mourning will be no more. Lead us into your joy. Lord, in your mercy, 
Christ spreads a table before you. Gather here with all the saints.
We give you thanks, most gracious God, that you have fed us with the bread of heaven and given us a foretaste of paradise. Enliven us to be your body in the world and to serve those who are in need through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The God of peace who creates all things and calls them good, who makes us alive in Jesus and who breathes on us the spirit of hope, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, be a blessing in the world. Thanks be to God.